to the channel. Today I am doing a video that I first saw at Library of a Viking do. By the way, check out his channel. He's a fairly new channel. His content's great. I would recommend. This is the get to know the reader, get to know the fantasy reader tag or something like that. It should be a fun, quick video to make. I am currently working on some really big videos for the channel and I need to start making more quicker stuff in between so that I don't get burnt out and so that I can focus on making the big stuff. Here's a hint. One of them is another in depth summary video. Can you guess which of these books it's for? Let me know in the comments. What is your fantasy origin story? So how I came to read my first fantasy novel. Uh, at a young age, my family moved around a lot. I went to a ton of different elementary schools as a kid. Unfortunately, I was never invited to Camp Half-Blood, so that sucked. But one year, my family moved to Vancouver Island to a city called Campbell River. This was grade four, I believe. Previously, I had read some like A to Z mysteries. I read some Goosebumps and those like Pokemon novelizations, maybe a Bionicle book or two. But then one year, my teach my librarian read to us the tale of Despero. It's about a mouse. It's a classic underdog story. What's not to love? But this isn't quite the fantasy that I was looking for. Later on in the year, uh, our teacher got our whole class to read this book called Medallion by Don L. Watkins. I guarantee this book does not hold up anymore. I remember it had a lot of classic fantasy tropes. It kind of felt like Lord of the Rings a bit, but at the time, this was just brand new to me. I thought it was incredible. I enjoyed it so much that at the end of the school year, when my family moved away, I, I conveniently forgot to give it back. I am terribly sorry, Campbell River Christian School. <laughs> Anyways, in the next school year, I went to a brand new school. I was the new kid. Again, I went to so many elementary schools. During a Scholastic Book Fair, I was introduced to Del Toro Quest, and this is the series that really got me into reading fantasy. Shortly after that, I read Percy Jackson and Harry Potter and The Inheritance Cycle. If you could be the hero slash heroine in a fantasy novel, who would be the author and what's one trope you'd insist be in the story? Brandon Sanderson would hands down be the author of my choice because at least I would know the story would finish. And also, I would obviously have some awesome powers if I was the hero. I would love to be a windrunner or an allomancer or something like that. Uh, as for tropes, a uh, chosen one, I would love to be the chosen one. Wait, actually, that's a lot of pressure. Maybe like a good underdog story, you know, or, or hidden inheritance or royalty. That would be pretty sick. Actually, just happily ever after. That's all I want. Is that so much to ask? Yes. What is a fantasy you've read this year that you want more people to read? Berserk. I've only started reading it. I've just finished the first arc, but this is a dark fantasy manga. And I just, there's a lot of people that have read it, obviously. It's an extremely popular manga, but I just want more people on booktube to read it and talk about it more because I'm really enjoying it. And I'm gonna make a review for the first arc very soon. Also, I'm hosting a big Percy Jackson read along on my Discord server. It has been over 10 years since I've reread these books and I just think they're really great. I think they hold up well. I would recommend them to adults as well to go back and read these books or read them for the first time. Yes, reading them as an adult, there's a lot of things you could kind of nitpick, but if you just let that go and enjoy it and have fun, I think this series is just so great. And I think it shouldn't be forgotten about or underestimated. What is your favorite fantasy subgenre? What subgenres have you not read much from? Epic fantasy is probably my favorite, but that's kind of a basic answer. Magical realism is something I'm learning that I, I really like and I want to read more of. Uh, grimdark fantasy, I've also discovered that I really like. Ever since reading Joe Abercrombie, I'm really liking that genre. I haven't really read much like romance fantasy books. I also haven't read much steampunk, but I kind of want to. Also urban fantasy, like adult urban fantasy. I haven't read a lot of that. And I know everybody in the comments right now is going to recommend me The Dresden Files. And if you keep on recommending it to me, I'm sure at one point I'll probably cave in and, and read it. I already got the audiobook for book one, so I do need to get into The Dresden Files at some point. Who is one of your auto buy fantasy authors? For me, Josiah Bancroft is actually a new auto buy author. Author. Also, Brandon Sanderson, I'm pretty much going to pick up every Cosmere book that he puts out. There's a few of his series I'm not as interested in if they're not Cosmere books, but even some of those I'm interested in. I enjoyed the Skyward books. I'm going to read the next ones. Also, Joe Abercrombie. I don't have all the books by him. At some point, I probably will pick them up because I've enjoyed everything I've read. How do you typically find fantasy recommendations? Basically, just through YouTube and Reddit. What is an upcoming fantasy release that you're excited for? Honestly, there's still a lot of books on my shelf that I'm excited to read that I haven't gotten to yet. There's a lot of books that released like a, a few years ago that I still want to read. 
I'm not even really thinking about the upcoming releases, except for The Lost Metal by Brandon Sanderson. I am excited for that. A fairly recent release, Empire of the Vampire. I really want to get to that book. Also, all of John Gwynn's books. I'm excited to read those. And Malazan, Books of the Fallen. I know that's a series I'm gonna obsess over, so I'm excited to read that. What is one misconception about fantasy that you would like to lay to rest? Probably that fantasy doesn't have much literary value. Yes, there's some bad fantasy books that are filled with overused fantasy tropes. Even wildly successful authors like Neil Gaiman and Ursula K. Le Guin, Philip Pullman, Diana Wynne-Jones, all of them have talked about in their careers how they have had to deal with people thinking that fantasy is bad, or fantasy is childish, or fantasy isn't real literature. This is kind of that irritating attitude of people who just think that fantasy books are about magic and dragons. Great work of fantasy hold up a distorted mirror to our own world. The very best fantasy novels are not about the dragons and magic. They're about telling human stories in a setting that's only a little bit different than our own. For instance, A Song of Ice and Fire is all about the political intrigue and the character development taking place in this huge world with intricate mythos, but it's all about the characters, their inner thoughts, and their dealings with others. In children's fantasy, it's often a way to bring adult themes about the world and humanity to, to children in a way that they'll understand. In every fantasy book, there's going to be themes and symbolism and things that you are going to bring into your own life, even if you don't realize it. There are so many quotes from the Stormlight Archive that I still think about all the time. To love the journey is to accept no such end. I have found, through painful experience, that the most important step a person can take is always the next one. If I feel overwhelmed in life, or I feel stuck like things aren't moving as quickly as I want them to, or I'm not reaching my goals as fast as I want to, then I think back on this quote, and how taking the next step is the most important thing. I will take responsibility for what I have done. If I must fall, I will rise each time a better man. Fantasy lets you dream, it lets you imagine, and imagination is one of humanity's greatest assets. You get to enter the mind of various different characters, maybe people in walks of life that you never would have imagined through their point of view and from getting all different types of perspectives on life. You can learn more about humanity, you can, you can take in their lessons and bring them into your own life. Maybe that sounds cheesy, I'm passionate about this. <laughs> Three books to recommend to people who have never read fantasy before. The Mistborn books by Brandon Sanderson. I feel like this is a great way to get introduced to fantasy. It's not the best fantasy series in the world, but it has some really interesting characters. It's got an incredible magic system and world. The pacing overall is pretty good. It's not an overly long series, and it's a good way to get introduced to the Cosmere. I would also recommend A Song of Ice and Fire and The Wheel of Time because both of those, even though they're very intricate and long series, they're the series that get people into fantasy. They're the gateway drugs. And they're also just really good, amazing series. And one more, The King Killer Chronicle by Patrick Rothfuss. A lot of people wonder why I recommend this series so much when it's not a finished trilogy. I'd never regret reading these two books even though the series isn't finished yet. They have meant so much to me. I've read them a lot and there's just a lot that I feel like I can gain from reading these two books. A lot of people don't like the protagonist or they just think the series is kind of too slice of life fantasy for them, but I really love these books. We see the ups and downs of the protagonist's life. It's incredibly well written and has beautiful lyrical prose, and there is a ton of hidden details and clues sprinkled all throughout the text that makes rereading it so rewarding. Who is the most recent fantasy reading content creator you came across that you'd like to shout out? Okay, I got a few I want to mention. Petrick Leo, uh, he's had a channel for a little while now, but I would 100% recommend watching his videos. He makes really great reviews. Uh, Library of a Viking, who I mentioned at the beginning of this video, he is also a newer channel. I just saw him make a post on Twitter saying he was going to make a channel. I decided to check it out, and his videos are awesome. I recently watched a few videos by Books with Brittany, and she makes some really great content as well. Michael Nip, I feel like, is an underrated channel. And Cameron from Wolf the Story Nomad. This is not a recent channel that I found. I've been watching his videos for a long time when his channel had a completely different name, but his channel is so underrated. I don't know why. You guys need to go watch his videos. They're great, 
and you should go subscribe. Honestly, I don't actually watch enough booktubers, so let me know in the comments if you got any recommendations for channels that I should check out. Okay, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe and all that stuff. Also, if you don't know, I opened up my Etsy shop again for a limited amount of time, so if you want some bookmarks and stuff, then make sure to check that out. Big thank you to all my patrons, and I'll see you guys in the next video.